Welcome to the second episode of Series 16, everyone. It has been an absolutely busy week for me, and silly me forgot to record this cold open until almost bedtime just last night, which happens to have been Mother's Day this year, which means it was a pretty busy family day. Speaking of, I hope all of the mothers out there listening right now had a wonderful day yesterday. You helped bring life into this world, and we are very thankful for all of the hard work that you put into the day-to-day -day life. It is such a remarkable and difficult job, um, as I am seeing firsthand um, every single day uh, with my lovely wife. And I know that this day isn't always the greatest for everyone out there. So for those, I say thanks for being you. Uh, you are amazing. And we are grateful for you to be here with us as well. But since I need to rush and get this episode out the door, I will just leave it at that. So stay tuned for more Hearts of Woodlin with Agatha Chen, Lowell Francis, and guest co-host Adira Slattery. Let's get to it, shall we? Enjoy. last episode, we were in the middle of creating characters for Hearts of Wu Lin. Agatha was making a student wandering monk. Lowell was making a loyal official. Adira was making an aware master. And I was making an unorthodox prodigy. We'll pick up right where we left off from last time. Enjoy. So there's so there so okay for the elements after we pick our style or look in our name and all of that um mm -hmm. it looks like we're picking elements um there's three different arrays that we select from yeah yep and then we just populate yeah, each of them should come out to a plus three total okay. but i've divided them in different ways cool. that's because i couldn't settle on <laughs> once one array as the the universal mm -hmm. one I like it though. I think it uh, it gives people a lot of options for people who want to go all out and people who want to play it a little safer and so on. Agatha, what's your style name? I'm in the middle of typing. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> <laughs> my style name is not important. What's important is my weapon. What's your weapon? Okay. Ten pointed uh, page. Hey, bells. bells. Nice. Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah, I went Easy. sledgehammer. Oh, sweet. Oof. Oh, I, I'm i so excited to describe <laughs> my uh, style and my weapon. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, amazing. So I think before we get to entanglements, uh, let's describe our characters a little bit of what we Absolutely. have so far. Oh, shoot. I didn't pick any looks. Okay, okay, okay. Go. Okay. Who wants to start? Well, I'll start. Uh, since I'm just super excited because this is, this is the second time I got to make up a PC myself. Um, so, uh, and the last time Agatha killed my brother. So you're welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so my character is a uh, seventh century zoo, uh, and, uh, he, him for pronouns and, uh, he is a loyal official. I don't think he's currently an official. I think he, he used to be, he, he was sort of an agent for the the uh, the emperor and the imperial households, looking into uh, the like disloyals amongst the the, the Wu Lin clans, and he was betrayed in the course of that, and he has kind of returned to the the factions, um, and he's trying to find his place within that. Um, strong burning eyes he still kind of wears formal clothing very tightly bound hair uh he has a slight pallor to his skin that that tells you that in the recent past he was deathly ill poisoned or badly injured and he has only 
just recovered from that. He tries to hide that that's that weakness. Um, it's why he's not necessarily as fast as he might have once been. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, instead, he focuses on that sort of caution and control. Uh, and he uses a, a, a long, like a good foot and a half iron brush. Uh, both, you know, it has a strong, it can hit, it can block. Um, but also when he wants to particularly humiliate, uh, he can, can dip it in the ink and then mark his opponent, <laughs> uh, if he wishes to. Um, uh, there are a couple of, of Shaw Brothers movies that have people fight with these, and it is wonderful, especially when they write something on the wall, like Loser, essentially, oh, as they're fighting someone. <laughs> uh, so uh, that's the character. His, uh, the, the, the weapon is from the limited, Limitless Character Brush, I think is what we're calling the school, and it's an Earth style. Um, and I, I took the, the moves for the official, and then I took one where I could pursue people. The, the trailer, The Everlasting Hero, is a playbook move that allows me to like hunt people easily. And then uh, despite his sort of standoffish nature, I took the move that allows me to, when I, when I do comfort and support for people, I get to uh, create bonds that I burn immediately for plus two instead of plus one. So I kind of, kind of got that, that uh, uh, contradiction between him, him being sort of apart, but also uh, uh, being loyal to his friends and uh, uh, comrades. Right. So that's me. Cool. All right. It's it's funny because when you said brush, my first thought was hairbrush. Oh, and, ooh, and so I was like, how, how, okay, you're fighting with a hairbrush, and then you can you can style your hair and after combat. No, I like the uh, I like the paintbrush a lot better. Yeah. I've seen people fight with their hair in movies too, which is pretty oh, awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess I can go next. My character is Black Petal. Awesome. Pronouns she her. Uh, her role is the aware master. Uh, her looks are long flowing locks, stormy eyes, stern grin, and an intricately patterned outfit. Uh, Black Petal is a person who generally is a little uh, standoffish. Um, she's uh, a little sort of s- prefers to be a little slower to act, much more wanting to take her time, gather everything together uh, before like leaping into the world. Um, she has, has her best stats in metal and wood. Um, yeah, her style is the Broken Mountain, which is associated with metal, which is control, calculation, and reflection. And her weapon is a big, massive sledgehammer uh, that uh, she uses effortlessly. Um, it would be usually a little surprising for uh, someone of her build to be picking up this massive hammer as just quickly as she does uh but she doesn't uh so the moves that i picked i am super excited about because they're both super cool the first one that i picked is called the promise which uh appears to let my character promise things to people so they don't die Mm. i love this move it's a great one yeah (laughs) and uh if black petal fails the move instead she just is haunted by the death which just sounds like a blast. And then the other move that I picked was Storm Rider, which allows Black Petal once per scene to travel anywhere within line of sight. She moves like a blur. And I think that's just like a super cool thing that is just like a cool standard of the genre of just these like awesome movements that I'm just excited by. Uh, what what you said uh you chose the intricately patterned outfit mm-hmm. what is the what is the pet is it like is it like black petals or is it something else what does that look so like? the out- outfit is a series of geometric patterns uh layered on top of each other uh Ooh. that looks like it might almost be sort of confusing and a little like fractal when you actually like try and look at it very closely uh i'm thinking like long sleeves uh a a like long uh robe that just, like just barely uh, skims above the ground, mm-hmm. and if you do really like get drawn in and look at the patterns and things like that, as you get really closer, you see it looks like that it's stitched and l- little stitches. It's actually a whole bunch of little petals, almost like uh, uh, pointillism, making this pattern. Nice, nice, very cool. I wanted to change one of my moves quick. Uh, okay. 
speak. Do you want me to? Oh, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. All right. So my character is uh, Xiang Hui, uh, which I picked because it sounds like it would be one of those uh, the names that temples like it's a Buddhist kind of like title that they would give um, to I th- I think in general all of the 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 monks that are there but i don't actually understand very fully what the tradition is so if anyone knows <laughs> uh, write in to well to asians represent tweet tweet us <laughs> at azns represent because i would like to know and i don't mind being wrong if i am please correct me um but anyway so i picked xiang hui which is kind of like mm, xiang is like a good uh so like auspicious light um, I suppose would be the direct translation. Uh, and how do I look? I have a, I, I'm, I have a crooked smile and I'm pretty tan because I work outside all the time. Um, we, this is one of those temples where we, we work the land and, um, and we were pretty self-sustaining. Uh, so, so, so you get tanned and maybe a little bit wrinkly as well because that's what happens when you have sun exposure without sun protection uh, and um, I, I again I have that crooked smile I'm just like I'm often just like if there is a joke I am ready to be in on it and I, I'm generally pretty easy going and it's pretty mm. and one can tell that uh, I am handsome but I don't know it <laughs> and this wasn't a description that I picked at first but I looked at a picture and I was like uh yeah pretty, pretty good looking guy um oh yeah yes that picture is a, is a good looking guy <laughs> yep yes yes um and uh, and what I wear are temple clothes. So they look pretty, um, they're, they're, oh, what is, they're, they're basically like linen-esque kind of like, uh, so they're beigey colored, uh, and they're loose, uh, but so they, I look just like a normal monk basically, except that, um, there are bells sewn to, uh, different parts of it and they're usually kind of hidden. So it's like the hems of my, uh, my shirt there are there are bells sewn to the bottom of it and i am wearing so instead of like the the usual uh, beads that the buddhist beads that people wear i they are my buddhist beads but they're also bells and Ooh, i have them on yeah. both hands and i'm also wearing them on both ankles so when i walk people always hear me nice. and um this ties very much into our temple's tradition like our fighting style um which is called the ten pointed cage, and uh, oh right, my my style element is fire. So this is a very um, this is a very fast fighting style. Uh, the way it works is that there's a pattern that I you know I would walk basically, and um, it's I'm supposed to be very fast. So I would be at one spot appearing at the next spot appearing at the next spot um and it's basically there's 10 points that i would be um stepping into uh each time with maybe a different pose for oh, coolness nice. effect <laughs> but the effect of it is that actually because i'm wearing all these bells um and i'm going so fast that it feels like uh the the bell is chiming from everywhere to whoever is within this formation wow. and then they feel like they are enclosed in this cage um, and uh, and the effect of it is that the bells actually that is how I really attack. I don't I can uh, strike with my hand, but I don't prefer to. And it's the bells that um, they will hit different pitches and then they will um, they will damage the opponent that way, throw them off balance, make them throw up, you know, oral attacks. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, uh, that is awesome. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I like the idea that you get really scary when suddenly it goes quiet. Oh, yeah. Like you you get instantly still the bells, and then we know you're serious. Yeah. Or <laughs> it's that when I'm they, normally walking. Oh, and I think, like, people from my temple probably have a reputation. Like, like we're pretty easygoing, but also... Um, it, depending on the situation, like in the areas around around the temple, people when they hear the bell, they're like, "Oh, they're coming with their like specialty uh, bamboo shoots <laughs> that they like to plant." Um, but then, uh, in certain parts of the of, of the Wulin world, then um, when you hear the bell, that's 
with us when you know that we're here. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. All right. And finally, my character, his name is Perfected Fist. Uh, he is an unorthodox prodigy. Uh, and he looks uh, unassuming. Uh, he's petite. He has an unflinching gaze and unkept hair, uh, but also hopeful eyes. Uh, and he dresses very modestly, uh, very like, uh, kind of like a modest, uh, I don't know, peasant sort of feel to the, the outfit, but, uh, bare arms to show off his arms, even though he is extremely scrawny and doesn't really have any defined muscle in his arms. Um, and that's because he has, uh, a special power. Um, one of the moves that I chose for him is kid with the golden arm. And this means when he tries to break something, which can be broken, um, I can break it hmm. and I can create cracks, uh, trace characters, shatter things into powder, uh, things like that. Uh, so I imagine he uses his fist for that. And, uh, his fighting style is called smoldering crater. Uh, it is of course fire based and i'm picturing when his power fully manifests itself uh whether he is punching a foe or the ground or whatever uh there is like a moment of kind of calm and then it just explodes into this like ball of fire basically that creates a smoldering crater on the ground knocking back the the foe that he's fighting uh which definitely is surprising coming from this scrawny little kid who has basically grown up as the scrawny kid his entire life and now he's an adult still scrawny still small but carries a big fist um and so i put his stats in uh mainly earth and fire and uh his worst stat is water because he lacks wisdom and awareness nice Oh, and one of his other moves uh, I chose was his name is nobody. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> when he deliberately heads off into a dangerous situation, uh, I can roll and then mark XP because he he oh. feels like he's he's able to handle anything. <laughs> and that lets you f create traps too, like traps yes. for yourself. Mm -hmm. You are in a trap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> trap for myself. You're the character that gets the note that says you need to come here to meet with me in private. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's when, true. Uh -huh. Whenever I look at the uh, Powered by the Apocalypse route move, I'm never most interested in what happens when I succeed. I'm always most interested in what happens when I fail. Because mm -hmm. yeah. failure is fun. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Right. Oh, yeah. I guess I should say my moves. Oh, sorry, Ryan. Were you oh, still? Yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah, I forgot to talk about it because I got too engrossed with talking about <laughs> my bells. <laughs> they're, um, they're cool bells. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so again, my background is Wandering Monk. And what is associated with this background is that um, uh, I, when I'm wearing my temple robes, locals treat me with respect and even bandits may think twice before attacking. I may ask for and be given hospitality while traveling. And the most important thing is I need to decide a vow which could cause me tr problems during my journeys. And last time I ran this game uh, and someone chose this background, they said, uh, can I choose multiple vows? Uh, and so <laughs> I feel very inspired by that. I said yes. And I'm going to uh, choose multiple vows as well. Uh, for sure, I one of them is I cannot kill. And another is I cannot drink. And then the third one is I cannot eat meat. Um, or any food, uh, any animal byproducts. Uh, actually, in the historical times, I think it was meat specifically. Yeah, because that involved okay. killing. Yeah. Okay, so those are my three. Very cool. cool. Yes, and so that's those are my vows. Um, you know, pretty pretty standard monk vows. And then uh, the other move that I chose, another move is the proud youth, which is when I seek the guidance of an elder, elder I tell them a problem I'm facing and ask them a question about it. Uh, they can tell me what to do and so on and so forth. Uh, and I can choose to either take their advice or go my own way. And both will have actually mechanical advantages. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. And then the other move I chose is sacrifice, which is when I mark the wounded condition, all of my allies gain plus one forward. Oh, nice. Mm. Very cool. 
Cool. So those are our characters. Yeah. What's what's yeah. next now? So the next thing we would do is we would go through and do entanglements. Yes. And the way we usually do this at the table is we go, okay, Lowell, you're going to start. Which one do you want to do? Do you want to do your romantic or your general? And then I would pick one and kind of make a suggestion about it, and we get approval on it. One thing being that, especially for a, a short term, we say is has to be a PC in each one of your entanglements. Mm. Um, uh, and then we would go around and do everybody's first one and then everybody's second one. So if you want to follow that that route, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so because I've said this, I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> um, so I was thinking that, and uh, uh, Adira, you can tell me whether how we want to work this out. I was thinking I was going to take one that um, blank, and I was going to say black pedal, uh, advise me not to pursue this NPC but then secretly wooed them. Ooh, I'm into that. What do you, what do you like that? Um, so uh, uh, so I'm going to put that black pedal. I'm not going to type while I do this. I'll say that. Um, uh, male or female? I'm good either way. Female. For female for the, the NPC. Yeah. Um, uh, so uh, do you have a name you want for that? Or should I just pick one here? Let's see. How about uh, eight pedals dancer? Sure. Okay, because that, that gives us another pedal reference then. So that's going to be my romantic one. Yeah, that could be part of some sort of flower-based faction. I like that. Black pedal and a pedal dancer. Ooh. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what flower? Oh. Hmm. So that's that's mine. So, oh, I don't know what this flower is called in English. <laughs> this happens all the time. But there's one flower that is uh, supposed to be... Oh. Peony? Oh, yeah. Oh, rocks peony? peony. Peony. Rocks peony. Would, okay. Uh, this, it, oh, there's a different different types, but that peonies, uh, historically, a lot in a lot of Chinese literature, was referred to as the queen of flowers. So mm. that is a suggestion I have. Yeah, I, I empress, like this. Empress of flowers. Um, then, oh, yeah. how about the peony society? Oh, nice. Ooh. It's pretty sweet. Black pud puddle advice you not to pursue eight puddles <laughs> dancer. Oh, I'm glad I'm not running this game, or else I would definitely <laughs> keep getting that confused all the time. Uh, oh yeah. Um, I, all right, so that's my romantic. I have one, uh, cool. which is oh. which is uh, my teacher so and so disapproves of me, and my friend so and so agrees with them, which is pretty savage, friend. <laughs> <laughs> and I think my teacher should definitely be someone from my faction, which I don't think applies mm -hmm. to anyone here. My teacher is definitely a monk. Mm -hmm. Or actually, I think my teacher is a a nun. Ooh. Mm. Um, so, and she she don't approve of me. So that's that's the life. Uh, <laughs> and one of y'all can is my friend. Uh, let's see. I wonder why my teacher disapproves of me. Oh, I think my friend uh, should be you, Perfected Fist. Oh, nice. I think it ha maybe either has to do with the fact that I'm too chill or like too pacifistic or something like that to kind of go along with your character concept. I'm not sure. What do you think? I think that could work very well. Yeah. Like, I, you're, you're so relaxed when it comes to certain things. And I'm just like, we got to we got to do this. We got to go. We got to act now. It's fair. You're just like, eh, I like we, it. We, we'll get there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I want to punch something. <laughs> yeah. Or it could be in situations where if someone were to insult either of us. Yeah. Uh, like, I wouldn't necessarily. Like, if you're like, oh, bro, you got my back. And I'll be like, but let's talk. And they'd be like, bro, mm. why don't you have my back? <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, I like that. Maybe something like that. So. Yeah, so their opinion is that I am too lazy, uh, and your interpretation of that word is maybe a little different, I think, from what my teacher means, mm -hmm. but you're both saying the same thing, yeah. which is that you think I'm lazy. <sighs> <laughs> so that's mine. Oh, awesome. right. I'll, I'll come up with a name for my teacher. So if I'm Xianghui, they should be... Oh, jeez. Okay. I'll, I'll come up with something. All right. Yeah tell everyone so uh in looking at the entanglement list i looked at the suggested ones for the aware 
And one of the romantic entanglements was a prophecy has kept Blink and I apart. Blink is determined to make sure of that. And that just seems great. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think it could be interesting if uh, it is um, uh, the uh, religious order that Agatha's character belongs to is who is making sure that my character is determined is, is not uh, with whoever it is that they are prophesized to be with. Oh, well, uh, my faction will be Skygate Mountain Temple. Cool. Because we ain't chill about our names, despite the fact that our main produce is uh, bamboo shoots. <laughs> <laughs> And you, if for, for the entanglement, you should like choose a representative, a uh, name of a representative from the faction Ooh. too. Uh, so, what was the name of your teacher? Great question. I'm still working on it. I'll. All get right, back cool, to cool. You. All right, I'll just put down teacher. But who do we think Black Petal is prophesized to be with? Um. Well, I mean, we could play into some of the like powerful destiny aspects of Perfected Fist mm-hmm. if you want. I think cool. that would work. Yeah. Because that kind of, uh, I was trying to figure out uh, something for my romantic entanglement too, and I think that would work out well. Oh, and she's two timing eight pedal stancer. That even just makes me even more. Angry. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, you can you can you can sleep with all sorts of people and be prophesized to be with someone else. Uh huh. <sighs> oh no, we're it's in that, that kind works. of a story. <laughs> I oh, man, <laughs> that means he's the main character. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Sorry. <laughs> so I think then it's very fitting I choose this. Blank has become jealous of the attention Blank pays to me instead of them. <laughs> um, I this think Eight sad. Petals Dancer has become jealous of the attention Black Petal uh, has been paying attention to me instead. Ooh, nice. interesting. I believe that's called a love triangle. Oops. I believe so. <laughs> Amazing. Also, I've discovered what I was referring to in terms of like what monks are called. This is in English, it's called Dharma names for monks, which I was not aware of. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so they're given something. But I think you need to like hit a certain level or something, and it's not everyone gets to just be named that. But in these stories, like the kids are given these Dharma names. Yeah. (laughs) If you understand Buddhism, please. Please tweet. <laughs> oh, it's back around to me, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, so uh, for my other entanglement, I took uh, Jade Serpent. My rival knows about the bad actions I did to the family or household of my friend. And I would like to say perfected fist for that. Okay. Like in my time for the Imperial household, I took actions against your your fa- would you think it's your family or your school or what do you think uh probably my family yeah okay so probably uh caused one of your close relatives maybe even a parent uh to die or be imprisoned mm-hmm. which do you think mom dad um let's go with uh with dad okay so i was instrumental though i'll never tell you this in the death oh, of your father snap okay there we go. That's my uh, general entanglement then. Oh, shoot. It's back to me. Um, mm-hmm. I, By the way, I picked a name for my teacher. Uh, her name her or her Dharma name is De Qing. Uh, so it's D-E space Q-I-N-G. So Q is always pronounced like C-H. Mm-hmm. De Qing. Yes. Okay. Oh, no. There are so many. <laughs> well, I mean, a part of this is that I am a monk, so... I love well I don't want another thing with my teacher because I I see one which is I love so and so but so and so a leader of my faction has forbidden it Ah, but that's soft I already have one about my teacher Um, (laughs) so uh, ah I like this one Um, I love so and so but they are wed to oh wait that means one of y'all have to be wed Um, does anyone want to be wed it could do that for me yeah yeah Okay. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, that works. Uh, so um, I can be in love with your character, and then you can be wed to my sibling. Sure. Oh yeah. Nice. Gr- great. So 
My general entanglement is my friend blank suspects blank of evil, but I remain steadfastly loyal. I think my friend should suspect the peony society of evil. Okay. And a particular person from that? Um, yeah, what should the, uh, let's do, um. Should I? Oh, we don't have a tie yet, but something. Yellow Blossom. Yellow Blossom will be the current head of the Peony Society. And let's go. So I don't think I have any. I have a connection to. I got this character's teacher, but not a direct connection to him. Yeah, I can you suspect. Wa- want to be friends? Yeah, let's be. I, I am a friend to everyone, I think. Uh, by the way, Lowell, did you did you want to come up with my sibling's name or and or gender? Oh, oh gosh. Uh, let's. I mean, they're clearly not a monk or a nun. Right. Uh, so how about? Uh, we'll get the names, factions, and nameless. Would I always have to look there? How about Crystal Willow? That's a good name. <laughs> cool. Uh, and uh, let's do she, her. Uh, just because of my love for eight pedals dancer. Okay. All right. And looks like I'm last here. Um, I have hidden my true identity from seven century zoo because of my past with Jade serpent. Yes. Nice. I want to say that, um, that you think it was my father that you had killed. And it was my, the father who quote unquote raised me, the father that everybody knows is my father, but I know that he is not my actual father. Oh. Wait, wait. So everyone thinks that Jade Serpent is your, was no, your that father? Everybody know. everybody thinks that, um, the person that died, oh. uh, because of, uh, Seven Century Zoo's actions, um, was my father. But my real father is, I don't know yet. Jade Serpent? Seventh Century Zoo? Any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the idea that 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 you, you're you entangled with Jade Serpent, who might know about your true father, mm-hmm. and you're not telling me because you know Jade Serpent, I love. Yes. I hate yeah. him. Why do you hate awesome. him? Is it because he poisoned you? <laughs> I think he poisoned me. He's also better looking than I am. Oh, so 100%. I hate that as well. So I'll never say that. You need to get a picture. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wonder. Yeah, I wonder what my past is with uh, with Jade Serpent. Um, mm. I wonder. I wonder if uh, like is Jade Serpent like is, Jade Serpent sounds like a leader type. I imagine he he presents to everyone as being just the yeah. best. People love him. I love him. <laughs> but he's a he's a jerk. He is a jerk. He's so nice. Mm-hmm. He's a secret jerk. I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Very cool. I like that. So that's all of our entanglements. And, Very cool. Yeah. And, and, and is there anything next is bonds? All, yeah. You would go through and look at each of your entanglements and pick one character from each of your entanglements and write a bond uh, for worth one point for each of them. I usually choose the PCs, but it's entirely up to you. <laughs> I think we picked the the same bonds uh, over here, but uh, totally different reasons. Oh, I love it! Yeah, yeah. that's great. Romantic rival and real rival. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. Wait, so so black pedal, are you in love with perfected fist? No, uh. but we are. We are um, destined. Prophecy uh, k- keeps us apart. Yeah, but like. We it is it is prophesized that we should be together. Yeah, but no, it's the prophecy has kept you apart. Yeah. So, but you also don't care about being together. Um, I mean, I think Black Petal finds Perfected Fist like charming and like interesting, but it hasn't really sort of developed into love. I think that Black Petal doesn't necessarily love Eight Petals Dancer either. <gasps> So the romantic rival is only from Seventh Century Zoo's <laughs> perspective. Yeah, which, which is perfect. Interesting. Black Petal is really um, protective with her emotions. Um, she doesn't like fling them out a whole bunch. Uh, uh, a lot more like uh, stoic and 
Um, now, the, the one thing I will say is if I, as a GM, I would say to you, one of the things is, is, is that, that those entanglements are about, you know, things that cause you inner conflict. So what is the situation with that entanglement that you would like actually have like, uh, uh, inner emotional turmoil on that? Um, I think the emotional turmoil on that would come from black pedal, uh, like, looking at perfected fist and being like wait a second do i actually feel something more here um like why am i laughing at all of these jokes why am i <laughs> um uh like why do i want to stand nearby them like like what's going on with all of these different things that's great i like that yeah, that is good awesome and i think that's it prophetic romantic no no <laughs> <laughs> okay let me get this straight so seven centuries to you yes um so black pedal advised you not to pursue eight pedals dancer for yeah what reason uh because because black pedal wanted to 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 have the all the kisses with uh uh eight pedals dancer and now of course eight pedals dancer won't have anything to do with me because she's all swooning over black pedal even though black pedal won't give her the time mm-hmm. of day that's not fair. And and eight pedals dancer is also jealous because black pedal also pays attention to me. Mm-hmm. Someone's gonna get stabbed. Yeah. Okay, and but let me confirm that you are married to my sister. Well, yeah, there's that too. <laughs> and somehow I am in love with you. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Interesting. The heart wants what yeah. the heart yeah, wants. Yeah, characters don't have to have taste. <laughs> Let me go back to your... Uh, it must be your tightly bound hair that is so attractive. <laughs> uh, see, now, if I had a Pinterest picture, you'd be like, like oh, gasp. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. <laughs> come on, Lol. <laughs> Get on it. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Jade Serpent keeps the secret of my true ancestry. Mm. So... Agatha, our characters are friends. How do we think they met? Like, are they traveling compatriots? Uh, are they what? Um, do you travel a lot? Uh, I would say Black Petal um, uh, travels uh, a fair amount, but very slowly. Like, mm. we'll definitely linger a lot in different places. Ah, then I think you were definitely around the Skygate Mountain Temple. Mm-hmm. Because I don't think I have left there for a very long time. Um, just to, well, I guess I'm a wonder. Yeah, because I, um, I want to fit in with my, my archetype of being a little on happy-go-lucky slash naive, and I think you're very, you're very cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, I find you very worldly and very fascinating. Um, and you have this way of uh, sometimes being a little dismissive that I find a little intimidating, but I also am like, whoa, I need to be their friend. <laughs> that kind of deal. Yeah. Uh, also, Black Petal does have this relationship with uh, Da Ching. So, like, there has to be some reason that, like, she is like how is she like keeping black pedal from being with perfected fist and i think it's that like your character's teacher has like a friendship with black pedal as well yeah and i wonder if uh, a part of why you do hang out with me aside from the fact that i am very handsome um, (laughs) and very that's always a plus very easy to to hang out with uh because i will laugh at all the jokes um is that Maybe Dushing has also asked you to look after me, mm. but in a way, this is kind of her way of, aside from being like, stay away from perfected fist, but also pay attention to someone else instead, <laughs> or be yeah. preoccupied with babysitting. There's my picture. Let's see, let's see. Oh, yes! Oh, nice. Where are the pictures? Scroll At down. The very bottom. Uh, oh, oh, there. Oh, okay. that is good. All right, Ooh. I buy it. You're a lot Ooh. younger. You're a lot younger than I thought you would be. I'm, I look young for my age. Okay, your, your eyebrows are so good. Okay, it's from a show you do not care for. <laughs> it is. <laughs> hmm. Ice fantasy, which can be found on Netflix, and is a crazy CJ. Wait, is this CGI. from? Is this from Ice Fantasy? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I think it's no. I think this is. Uh, Isn't it? No. It's not because I see the writing right now. It's 
I, I can only say it in Mandarin. I don't know what it's called in English. Okay. It's Xin Xiao Xi Yi Dang. This is like when I thought it was from Ice Fantasy. This is written by Gu Long, who has written. Uh, La- oh, okay. So he didn't certainly didn't write Ice Fantasy. No, <laughs> I mean, I, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I have no idea how to even find a picture for my. Game. Oh, okay. So if you yeah. want to, if you want to end this Egg episode, I will link you. Uh, so, yeah, so are, are we that. are we then fully done with all of our characters stuff? Yeah. We would we would go nice. Oh, very yes. cool, awesome. Yes, I yeah. I like this a lot. Um, yeah, we've got a pretty cool team here. Are there anything uh, that we can anything else that we can do to link our characters together? Um, I know I've got this prophecy that keeps me and Black Petal apart, which I think also kind of uh, means it, it almost feels like a challenge to my character. Like you're telling me I can't do this. I can do anything. I I I think I'm gonna try to pursue this because you know, forget prophecy. Uh, and how how did we? So were you also around my temple then? And that's probably. why you even heard about this prophecy, or you were brought here at some point by someone when you first showed your immense skill or after your after their father died yeah your father quote unquote yeah probably he, after if he my raised father. you he still counts as your father yeah 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 i think that works not my yeah, not my biological sh- father but yeah yeah what is fatherhood mm-hmm. so so that's why you were that's why we're friends because we, when you were here uh uh i i imagine maybe your attitude is a little confrontational mm-hmm. so um maybe you, you didn't have a lot of friends because everyone's like oh who's this kid that's just coming and being rude all the time yeah but but i thought you were cool <laughs> <laughs> there's a theme going on <laughs> i was like whoa yeah <laughs> perfective fist he gave himself that name <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to do so that. cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> And I hang out with you, even though I'm a, definitely a goody two shoes. That's and awesome. Be like, Let's do this, and I'll be like, "Oh, but it's against the rules." <laughs> <laughs> but we can do anything with me here. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. I like that. Um, nice. Anything else? Okay, I, I will tell you. Once you've got those two entanglements, that that once you map yeah. that out, actually, uh, uh, at the table, it is it is more yeah. than enough. Yes. I like it. I like um, it a lot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, close this episode out then. Okay, cool. Well, thank you both so much for joining us for our Hearts of Wulin character creation episodes. Uh, Agatha, do you want to remind people where they can find you? Yes, uh, you can find me through all of the so- social media associated with uh, <laughs> Hearts of Wulin, associated with Asians Represent. So it is at AZNS represent on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Mm-hmm. And you can also email me, um, which is actually the best way to contact me, <laughs> uh, at AZNS represent at one shot, one shot podcast.com. Thank you. One shot podcast.com. Yeah. Is that it? <laughs> that sounds right. That- at one shot podcast.com. Yes. And how about yourself, Law? Uh, so I'm on Twitter at uh, edige23, and uh, you can also get a hold of me via the Gauntlet on the the Gauntlet forums, uh, or you know check out the the podcast or the Gauntlet podcast, which I I do. Um, you can contact me through those things. Very cool. And well, thank you everyone for listening, and please join us on the next episode for our discussion portion. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. 
Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you like the systems discussed and wish to purchase them, links to the products can be found in the show notes. Also, check the notes or the website for cool stuff to go with each character, such as dice or mixtapes. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you will find other great shows like Modifier. Modifier is an interview show hosted by Megan Dornbrock, all about why and how people change games. From the hobbyist to the professional, from house rules to publication, we all have in mind a better way to play. What's yours?